Welcome back, everyone. Dan Vega here, Spring Developer Advocate at VMware. Today, we're going to dive into the world of TDD, which stands for Terrific Development with Dan. Of course not. It stands for Test Driven Development. And I got a little bit of a confession to make. I'm no expert in TDD, and that's okay. We're going to learn together. We're going to build a Spring Boot application today following some TDD methodology here. And as a developer, I know that writing tests is very important. But if I'm being honest and I write a whole bunch of functionality and there's not someone, some boss standing over me telling me that I need to implement some tests, I'm less likely to do it. So this is one of the things I really love about TDD is I know tests are important. If I write them first and then drive my functionality off of those, then I'm going to have some good code coverage. I don't know what that number needs to be, but I'm going to have some, some code coverage when it comes to testing. So I'm excited about this. We're going to have some fun today. All right, now the reason we're doing this today is because we're starting to build out a new service called the Danson Placeholder Service. What is Danson? You've heard of JSON Placeholder Service. This is the Danson Placeholder Service. Really just a fictitious uh, set of applications that I'm building to kind of go over a couple of concepts. One of which is Spring Cloud Gateway will cover why you might want to use a gateway, what it can do for you. And this is going to help illustrate that. We're going to create all of these different microservices based on the JSON placeholder service. So the first one we're going to start with is this post service. And the way that we're going to do that is by building this application following some TDD. Now, this might work better in your organization where you have actual epics and stories created and features to build because you can use those features to kind of start your TDD. I'm going to really just start with the JSON placeholder service. I'm not going to take the time to build out user stories, but we're just going to say, hey, we're starting with something that looks like that. Let's try and replicate that, and we'll start by doing that with tests. I think this is going to be fun. Uh, we're going to learn together. You guys are the experts. I'm just kind of the microphone in the video here. Uh, so let me know below in the comments uh, if there's some things that we can improve on. That'd be great. I, I love learning I love to learn from you guys. So if we can improve upon it, great. What are some pros and cons that you find with TDD? Let's share and learn together. So with that, let's head over to start.spring.io and create our application. All right, I'm going to get started over at start.spring.io. I'm going to choose Maven as my build tool, the latest version of 3.2, which is currently milestone 3. I'm going to go ahead and choose a group of dev.danvega. We'll call this Danson. And actually, the artifact is going to be posts. Let's just stick with posts for now. Uh, I'll put this in a package called Danson. And we'll go ahead and choose Java 21. I'll go ahead and choose a few dependencies here. So we are going to be building a web REST API. I'm also going to choose the um, dev tools. I'm going to choose the actuator. We are going to use Spring Data JDBC. We are going to use a Postgres SQL driver. Because of that combination, I'm going to choose the Docker Compose support. And I'm going to choose test containers because we'll need that for our integration tests. So with all of that said, I don't think I've missed anything, but if I did, we can go ahead and add it later. I'm gonna go ahead and generate this project. We'll go ahead and download a zip file. I'll go ahead and open this up in my favorite IDE, IntelliJ Ultimate. You can open it up in whatever text editor or IDE you're most productive in. With that, let's write some code. All right, so here we are in our application. I'm gonna go ahead, I like to rename this to application. I'm going to go into uh, my tests here for a second. I'm going to delete these. I don't need these for right now. And what I'm going to do is I want to start with kind of what we're going to build out. So I'm going to start with a new directory here. I'm going to call this data. I'm going to create a new file in here called posts.json post.json, and this is what's going to drive our application. If you've never heard of JSON placeholder service, go ahead and take a look at it. It has a bunch of different endpoints that you can make REST calls to. So this is the data that I pulled from the JSON placeholder service. They have 100 posts in here. There's a user ID, an ID, a title, and a body, and this is just for the post service. There are other services like comments and albums and photos and users and to-dos. So we're going to model each of those services, but today we're focused in on the posts. 
So again, I could go about this in just starting to build out a REST API, but I want to kind of do this in a TDD fashion. Now to do that, I could start with a test, um, and I'm going to. So let's go ahead and create a new Java class inside of hosts. Yep. Um, so actually, I know that inside of here, I'm going to have, and actually I'm going to refactor this. Let's say all directories. I don't, I just want this to be my main package. So let's say refactor that. And then inside of here, I'm going to create a new package called post. And inside of here, I'm going to start with a new test and we're going to call this the post controller test. Now, um, I might, in a real world situation, I might even start further back. I'll probably have like a JSON test for an individual post. Uh, my post is going to be a record with some fields in it. I might construct some type of test to just test that I can create a new post. Uh, in the interest of time and not making this an hour video, uh, we'll kind of skip ahead to this. So I know I need to create a REST API. How does this start? What do, what do my tests look like? So when I go out and create a new controller test, you could come in here and say, hey, this is a Spring Boot test. The problem with this is, is we end up loading the entire application context. And sometimes, depending on the size of your application, these tests could get pretty slow. In this case, all I'm testing is the post controller. And this is what's known as a web test. So I can use the web MVC test annotation. And this is now a slice test. This is going to only load the relevant bits to the web. Now, normally what I do is come in here and say this is specific to the post controller test. Uh, but I don't have that, uh, or post controller, sorry. But I don't have the post controller, so I need to create that. So let's create this post controller test um, inside of source. No, see, it won't let me do that. Uh, no. So let's come in here and say new package post. And in here, I'm going to create a new class called post controller. And now that that's there, this should be happy. Cool. So now that we've got that, we also want to auto configure mock MVC because we're not actually loading up uh, Tomcat or some type of server container. We're kind of loading up a mock MVC environment where we can make mock calls to the controller or to the REST API and examine, you know, do some mocks and return responses. Really what we're, we're checking here is the inputs to the controller and the outputs. And we're making sure those are okay. We're making sure our API routes are correct, those type of things. So, we're going to have a post controller here. I'm going to, um, because of that, because of that auto configure mock MVC, I can now get a, 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 an instance of mock MVC. And this is what we'll use to make those mock calls. So I'm going to need a, um, so I actually, I'll back up here. Maybe I'll do like a, let's do a setup method. So setup. We are using JNF5, and in here, I might create some posts, right? I might need one or two posts to mock out some data to work with. Now, to do this, I need to create a new post, and I don't have one. And so this is where kind of my first story would come in. Again, I would probably create a test around this. Um, and for the for for the essence of time, we'll, we'll kind of skip that stuff. So I'm going to come in here and create a new Java class. I'm going to say that this is a post and this is going to be a record. This is going to be modeled again off of this data. So user ID, ID, title, and body. So integer ID, integer user ID, uh, string title, string body, right? So those are uh, those are our components of our record. Now we're going to use Spring Data JDBC eventually, but right now I don't need that. I just need to be able to create some instances of posts. And so what I'm going to do is create a few posts here. Let me create two, and that is in a new post for uh, with the ID of one that is has a title of Hello World. So I'm going to assign this to a list of posts called posts. And this way we can go ahead and use this throughout our tests. So that should work. And I'm gonna need one more here, which is for 
integer version. We'll talk about what we need that for in a little bit. That's for more of Spring Data stuff. So cool, so now I have the setup going. I can create a post, that's good. Now I need to start to build out my REST API, right? Starting with list. I need to be able to list all of the posts in the system. So how do I do that? Um, so I'm gonna start with a test. I'm gonna say test void it should find all posts. And we're gonna go ahead and find all posts. So now what I'm gonna do is use that mock MVC that we asked for earlier. So I'm gonna say um, mock MVC, mock MVC dot perform. We're gonna perform a git request. I'm gonna go ahead and import this static method. And oh my gosh, there's a lot of them. This always confused me, but um, I just start typing out MVC. So I see a mock MVC request builders, um, and you can see it's from the request um, package. So that looks like it'll work. So what am I performing a get on? Well, what I wanna do is I wanna get a particular route. Now I haven't figured that route out yet, but uh, going into this, I know that all of my um, APIs are gonna live under slash API and then whatever resource I'm worth working with, so slash API slash posts. So that should give me all of the uh, posts in the system. Now what I'm gonna say is um, what when that's done, when that, when that call is made, I should expect that we get a status. So again, I need to import that. And I wanna say that that status is okay. Uh, so that's basically a 200. So we need to uh, go ahead and add the exception for that. And now my test is in place. So the real question now is when we call the controller, what's gonna happen? So this is going to fail, of course, because we haven't done anything in the controller. So we can see here that it won't go through. Let me make this a little bigger. And it says 404. Uh, that particular resource that you're looking for is not found. You thought you were gonna get a 200 back. What you got back was a 404. So now this tells me, let's go ahead and build out the controller for finding all of the posts in the system. All right, so I'm gonna start here and make this a REST controller. We are going to set a request mapping of slash API slash post. This just means that anything underneath this class, any method that we have some type of request matching on, uh, we'll use that as the base. So now we need a method to find all of the posts in the system. So I'm gonna use a git mapping and with an empty uh, annotation there, that just means we are going to use slash API slash posts as the base for that. So what is this gonna return? This is going to return a list of posts. We're gonna call this find all, and for right now we'll return null. Now I also noticed something in my new package by feature days, I don't need to make this public, so this is not going to be public, and we are good to go there. So now what do I do? Now I need to make this work. Well, uh, I need to basically pull out those posts, stick them in a database, and then I can use a repository to read from them. So we're gonna kind of speed this up. We've done this before in past videos, so I'm not gonna harp too much on this particular step, but I'm gonna have a post data loader. This is going to be a component, and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna implement the command line runner, and that way we can go ahead and insert some data. Again, not to make this the point of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and stick some information in here. Uh, we'll come back to this in a second. We need a post repository, so post repository, and this is going to be an interface that extends the list crud repository, takes in a post, the uh, ID type is an integer. Whoops, integer. Okay, so now this should all work. Uh, things are looking good. So now what's gonna read, what we're gonna read back from that data here is basically a list of posts. And I just create a record type for this. So I'm gonna say, uh, we'll call this posts and record. And then I just say, hey, I'm gonna get a list of posts and we'll call this post. That way I have a return type for this. Uh, and everything should work. So where is this gonna go? This is gonna save it into a database. What database? 
Uh, this is going to be based on the Compose YAML. So let's call this the um, posts. And we'll say my username is Dan. And I like to go ahead and set a version of the image that I'm using. This way, everybody that pulls this down is getting the same experience. So we're going to use 16. I'm also going to map this to 5432 on both the host and the container point. If you are a little bit unfamiliar with that, that's okay. I just did a video on being able to connect to the database that is running in the Docker container. Now, if you're interested in that, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below. So I think we're almost there. Uh, we do not have uh, the bits needed to kind of set this database up, right? So from the post side, we, on the Spring Data, Jada, on the Spring Data JDBC side, we need to make this an at ID. We need to make this an at version. And then what I'll need here is a schema file, uh, schema.sql. I'll go ahead and paste in the schema. Uh, it's not that important. Basically what we're doing is we're setting up ID, user ID, title, body, and version. And finally, in application.properties, I wanna make sure that it we will go ahead and run that schema.sql because it's not an embedded version of a database. We need to tell Spring, hey, if you see that file, I'm using something like Postgres. Please go ahead and run that file. So let's see. I think we might be almost there. And I think I've already violated TDD because, oh, no, we ran this and it failed, right? So what we want to do is we want to run this and see if it works. So let's see if we can't run this. Oh, and there we go, it worked. Uh, that's great, that is awesome. Now, okay, now all that worked is slash API slash posts. We are actually responding to that particular request, right? So that is not um, everything that I want. What I need to do is I also want to verify the response that comes back from that. Now, here's where we're going to get into some trouble, right? Um, over here, we want to use a repository. So we want to say private, final, post repository, post repository, and we'll add this through constructor injection here, and then we'll say post repository dot find all. Cool, so this should return basically uh, 100 records. And if we were to fire this up, and again, I know I'm going through this kind of backwards, but we're all new, we're learning together, all right, friends? Um, so let me come back over here and say run this. Sorry about that. Um, and Docker is not running. We should have Docker running if we want to use uh, a Docker container, right? So I'm gonna run that. Um, now we can go ahead and try and run that. Uh, it sees our Docker Compose file, it starts some things up, and it is confused about our syntax. Uh, error at the end of the input. All right, this seems like a schema file issue. Sure is, we forgot good old semicolons. Ruin everything. All right, let's try that again. And we are loading information in the database. Everything looks like it's running. If I go to a terminal, HTTP 8080 slash API slash posts, and there's our 100 posts. So cool, so far so good, but again, I'm kind of doing this backwards. We're supposed to do this through a test, but we're not on an integration test yet, right? We're on a kind of more of a unit style test. I hate calling these unit tests because we're involving the framework, so it's not a true unit test, but it's also not an integration test. So uh, you can call it whatever you want. For me, it's a controller test. So. We are not loading up the entire context. We are not doing an integration test with the database. Here's where we need to figure out what we want to do. And what I'm going to do here is mock out the repository. So I'm going to say, hey, I need a mock bean for the repository. Um, that mock bean is going to be, why is that acting all strange for me? Um, that is going to be the post repository, post repository. And now what I want to do is when that is called, 
I want to basically mock out the results. So first what I'll do is I'll set some, uh, I'll set some expectations. This is kind of the given when then. Given this response, when you do this, here's what I expect you to get. So I'm gonna say, hey, this is the JSON response that I expect. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to mock this out. We're gonna use Makito's mock method, and we're gonna say when the repositories find all method is called, I want you to go ahead and return a list of posts here, and we'll just go ahead and return the posts that are in, that we set up before. So these are the two posts. Now what I can do is I can also uh, do an assertion against that JSON, what is getting sent back. So now I could say, and expect the content, right? I wanna make sure the content is, uh, we're comparing the JSON. So I'm saying, hey, this is what I expect that response to look like. All right, so now let's see if we can go ahead and run this. Now we're mocking out that post repository. When it's called, um, we just say, hey, we're gonna return those posts instead of the 100 of them. Um, so if we were to look at the size of the result, that would be two. All right, so we're starting to make some progress here. So now what we wanna do is write another test, see it fail, and make it pass. So the next thing in uh, the world of REST is I want something that looks like slash API slash post slash one. I want that to pass and I want something like slash API slash post slash 999 that should fail because there is no object in the system with an ID of 999. So let's start to get to those tests. So I'm gonna start with a test. I'm going to say, I like to, again, there are some different trains of, there are di different ways of like naming your tests. Um, and I haven't really standardized on one myself. Again, I haven't done enough testing over the years to really have ingrained this into me. So I uh, would love some suggestions on how you name your methods. I, I kind of just be descriptive as possible. So I'm gonna say, I should find a post when given and uh, uh, a valid, I don't even say, when given valid ID, right? So that is going to be the name of my test. So how do I, how do I make sure this works? Um, so I have the given. The given is I have some posts here. So I already have one post. So I have something I could test on. When, so we're going to mock this out again. When post repository dot find by ID. So that is a finder in the post repository. So when it's past one, I want you to go ahead and return. So you can see this actually returns an optional of posts. So I will say optional dot of, and then I'll say posts dot get, let me just get that first one, right? So now I have uh, a post that's being returned. I'm gonna import, uh, yes, this one. So now when that is called, that's what I want you to return. So now I know um, mock MVC, oops, mock MVC dot perform. We are gonna perform a git to slash API slash posts slash one. When that happens, uh, I just wanna make sure, I wanna expect that the status is okay, is okay. All right, and let's start with that before we kinda move on. Uh, we'll throw that exception. So uh, let's go ahead and run this, and that's gonna fail. Again, we haven't implemented this. We expected a 200, we actually got a 404 because that route doesn't exist yet. So I'm gonna hop over to post controller and I'm gonna actually do a little something here. Something I didn't mention before is I kind of like to have the test and then the class uh, in the same editor. So I'm kind of looking at both of them. So if you're working in kind of a TDD style, you may wanna have your test on one side and your controller on the other or the system under test, if you will. So now what I need is I need a git mapping for slash ID. Again, this is a dynamic variable. We're gonna pull that from the path. So what this is going to return is an optional of post. 
and we'll call this find by ID, same as the uh, repositories method, but that's okay. So we're gonna pull this from the path using the path variable annotation. We'll say this is an integer called ID. And what we will return is the uh, post repositories find by ID method and we'll pass the ID. So that's looking good. Now I can probably go ahead and run this and we should go ahead and pass on that. That's good, all right. Um, now what we wanna do is do a little bit of an assertion here to say, Hey, what I get back, so what, what do I get back and expect the content, uh, the JSON return from that to look like something. So let's say JSON here. And so now I need to like give an expected result. So I'm gonna say uh, JSON is equal to, and we'll use some triple quotes here. So um, I could just hard code this, but I am using Java 21 and I'm gonna say uh, post is equal to post.get. I'm gonna get that first post and I'm going to use uh, string templates here. So string, again, you could just hard code this if you're not using Java 21, that's fine. But if you're not, what? why are you doing that? What are you doing? Use Java 21. Um, so this is just the ID probably telling us, hey, we, we don't know what you're talking about. And then this is saying, hey, I can't, I'm not supporting that yet, but we can just set the language level to 21 and that should support it. So now we are basically going to uh, build some JSON here and then test to see what is returned from there is matched. So um, that is really just kind of testing the deserialization of the post object and making sure it is what we expect it to be. So now we know if somebody calls this method, this is the resulting JSON that they're gonna get. This is important for me because if I go through and change something on the way that we like serialize and deserialize objects in the system, um, like let's just say we went into the post record and said, hey, go ahead and hide the ID, don't return that. Now what I'm doing is I have this in my tests. And so if we made that change and just checked this in somewhere and now we have our tests uh, that are automated and running, it's gonna say, hey, whoa, 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 that's not passing anymore because we expected this kind of full result to look like this and it's not anymore. So again, if, you, if you've done any testing in the past, you know one of the, the biggest pros for it is just kind of giving you that confident of, confidence of changes. All right, so next I may want to have a scenario where I throw some type of not found exception. So let's just say at test uh, void should not find post when given invalid ID, right? That's a scenario we might want to look for. So now let's go for this. So we're gonna use this same thing here, but maybe we call uh, 999 and we just wanna make sure that um, this is not, is not found. Okay, so how do we, how are we gonna make this happen? Well, we are going to mock this out again. We're gonna say, hey, when the uh, post repository dot find by ID is called with, a, with an ID of 999, then we are not gonna return something, we are going to throw something. Now this is a little bit, so in the real world, I want this to actually throw the method, but again, we're, we're mocking this out. I know that when I come back and do an integration test later, this is gonna fail, so I might do something like, um, find by or else throw. And then I might say, I might have like a post not found exception and we'll create a new one of those. So first I need uh, this class. So I'm gonna create a class called post, found, post not found exception. Uh, that looks good. This is going to um, extend the runtime exception and we also want to have an HTTP HTTP, st uh, I'm sorry, response status of not found. Okay, so that looks like that will, that will work, okay. Um, so that will work once we get to the integration test, uh, but right now what I need to do is just throw that 
post not found exception. So that's why I did this the way that I did. Uh, it's kind of covering the scenario and the next scenario that we'll run into when we write that integration test. So let's see if we can go ahead and run this. And uh, yeah, everything looks good. Cool, so we're moving right along here. So we've got our list, we've got our find methods. Now I need to create a new post. So let's go ahead and create a test. I'm gonna say void should create new post when post is valid. Cause we'll probably have a scenario where we take in some input that's not good and we wanna make sure that it doesn't create a post in that scenario. Okay, so first let's go ahead and make this fail. So I'm gonna say mock MVC, nope, wrong one there. Mock MVC dot perform. Now we're gonna perform a post and we're gonna perform a post to slash API slash posts. Um, we also need to have another parameter here. So normally we've just been doing that. Um, now I also want to say, um, I wanna set the content type. So I'm gonna say that, hey, what I'm sending you is application slash JSON, great. Now what I could say is I want to uh, send some content. Um, actually, we're not gonna send any content just yet. And what I want to say is, and expect the res and expect what is coming back. Uh, the status I want it to be um, is created. So that's like a two hundred one. I want to make sure that something was created. So let me just knock this down to the next line, and we're also going to uh, send in some content, and I'll just put that as an empty string for now. So let's go ahead and throw that exception and everything looks good. So let's go ahead and see this fail. Okay, again, uh, the problem here is gonna be that we expected a 201 back. We got a 405. What did we get a 405 for? The method post is not supported. So when we just create a REST controller here, uh, the default methods allowed, I believe, are just git and options maybe, git options head. Uh, but we don't support the post yet, and that's because we haven't implemented a method that supports post. So let's do that in the controller now. So I'm going to start with a post mapping. This is going to just go to um, slash API slash posts. And we are going to return a post. We'll call this save. And uh, maybe save is not the best word because we're not, uh, we're going to create one for updating as well. So we'll call this create. Inside the create, we'll go ahead and take the request in a request body. So this says, hey, I'm going to take some, some JSON in the request body. And what I want you to do is I want you to turn that into a post. And so this is the post that we're going to be creating. And then we'll just say, hey, repository go ahead and save that post. So that's that. Um, I also want to do some validation. So we're not going to add any validation to the post just yet, but I want to say, hey, make sure that this post is validated. Again, we haven't done anything to the post to like add validation rules to it yet, but all we're doing with that is saying, hey, go ahead and validate it. So now if we go ahead and run this, we should be able to hit the post API, but we're still going to have a problem because the um, expected status was 200. Now we got a 400 because what we're sending in is just some empty string. We're not actually sending data over. So let's go ahead and fix one of those problems, which is, hey, when this returns, I want you to return the response status of uh, HTTP status that created. So now I need to go ahead and construct the JSON that we're gonna send over in this call. And I'm just going to, all right, so first I need a post. I'm gonna go ahead and get one from our posts. We'll say posts.get, and then I'll go ahead and say when the post repositories create method, I'm sorry, save method is called, I want you to go ahead, when it's called on post with a post, then I want you to go ahead and return just that post, right? So 
Um, that is what's going to be returned. But now I need this content. I need some JSON that we're going to send as a, a new post in the request body. So I could do a couple of things here, um, one of which I could use uh, the object mapper to turn this particular post record into some JSON. Uh, I've just been having some fun with uh, string templates lately in Java 21. So I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna copy this in here and paste that here. And that just gives me some JSON. So now I can go ahead and pass that in here. So now what happens when I call a uh, post on API slash post, I pass this in as the request body. Um, actually, this is going to, yeah, this is fine. Um, it's just gonna create the same one that already exists. So we could come in here and say, post is equal to new post. Um, let's just say three, one, new title and then new body and null. All right, so now we have this post and we'll use that in the JSON that we send over and let's go ahead and see if this will work. All right, so, so far, so good. We are moving right along. We have implemented um, a few of the methods. Really what we need left is update and update and delete. All right, so let's go ahead and knock those out now. All right, and actually before we get to that, I think I wanna write one more here. So let's say test void should not create post when post is invalid, right? So we wanna test in this scenario. Again, this is part of mocking out the repository. What we care about is the inputs and the outputs of the controller. And so now we have this validated thing and we wanna come over here to post and we wanna say, hey, we wanna make sure that the uh, title is not empty. Oh, and we did not bring in the validation package yet. So let's do that. Let's go down to our palm.xml and in here, I'm going to say that we need a new dependency. This used to live in the Spring Boot Starter web. Now it lives in Spring Boot Starter Validation. So we're gonna bring that in, save, refresh Maven here. Now we should be able to come in here and say, hey, uh, and again, because we're on Spring Boot 3, Java 17 plus, we're using Jakarta EE now. So we're saying, hey, jakarta.validation.constraints. I want the title to not be empty. I want the body to not be empty, okay? So this means now in our test case, we can go ahead and simulate that, right? So a lot of this is gonna be exactly the same. So I'm gonna copy this, I'm going to paste this, but this time I'm gonna say I don't have a body, I don't have a title, and I don't have a body. Those are gonna be empty. So it's gonna use those. Let's go ahead and throw that exception. Now what we wanna make sure is that the status is a bad request. This should throw a 400. So let's see if that will go ahead and work. No, did not work. So let's find out what's going on here. Uh, status expected 502, but was 400. Oh, bad gateway. I meant bad request. Let's do that again, Dan. And there we go. So nice little, uh, just nice little way to go ahead and make sure our, our validations are working as well. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and delete. So let, or I'm sorry, update. So let's say, let's write a new test. Let's say void should update post when given valid post. Now here's where we can kind of have a discussion about this. If we've checked the validations here, do we really care about checking the validation? Yeah, I guess we do, right? Uh, because we will have a new method for saving. So yes, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna have a valid post and an invalid post. So in this scenario, um, I need to have a valid post. So let's go ahead and um, create a new one. So first I need an updated post. So I'm gonna say post updated is equal to new post. So I'm gonna have an ID of one. So I'm using an existing one, but I'm going to kind of simulate here updating that. So this is a new title, right? And then I'm gonna say, this is a new body. Um, and then I'm gonna say, uh, we're probably gonna have a version there. So we're gonna bump that up. 
And actually that version may be one. Let's just change that. So um, let's go ahead and say, okay, when the repository calls the save method, because again, we're calling save on this, and is past the updated post, then I want you to return the updated post, right? Um, sorry, updated, okay? So that is making sense. Now we can go ahead and say mock MVC dot perform, and now we're gonna perform a put. We're gonna do that to slash API slash post slash one. We wanna make sure, uh, similar to the last one, we are going to say, uh, what are we saying here? We are saying content type. What we are sending you is application slash JSON. And we also are going to send some content to you, which right now will just be that. When we are done, uh, I expect to get back what is the status. Um, I expect the status to be is okay. Okay, so um, not, not good so far. What did we miss? Um, so, oh, we are okay. All right, um, go ahead and throw that. So again, right now we don't have an update method. So we're gonna see this fail and we're gonna implement that. Okay, just checking, but I should expect a, uh, I expected a 200, got a 405, and the 405 is we haven't implemented the put method yet. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm gonna start here with a put mapping, and we're gonna go to slash API slash posts, and then the same as the finder, we're gonna use a dynamic ID. So from there, we're going to return a post, we'll call this update. We are going to take in a path variable for the ID. So this is an integer ID. And then we're also going to take in a request body. So whatever is in JSON format, and we wanna turn that into a post. So we'll call this post. So from there, what are we going to do? Well, first I wanna make sure I can get the existing post based on the ID. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say repository.findById, we'll pass in the ID, that should return an optional of post, and we'll call this the existing post. I'm just gonna call that existing. So once I have the post, uh, what do I do now? Now I want to go ahead and say, can we get that out? So if it's present, we're gonna do one thing. If it's another, I'm going to um, throw new post not found exception, and that should be good. If we do find it, what are we gonna do? Well, I wanna get the updated post. So I'm gonna say post updated is equal to new post. So the reason is I can't just use this post because it's a record, it's immutable. I can't just call like, uh, change the title or change the body, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, all right, the ID is going to be the existing ID. So I'm gonna say existing.get.id. What is the um, user ID going to be? This is going to be the same, existing.get.userID. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change the title and the body. So I'm gonna say post.title, post dot body, and then I'm going to say, uh, let me get the existing version of, oops, let me get the existing version of the git, and then the version, right? So that looks pretty good, and then from there, once I have that, I can say return whatever the repository's save method returns and pass in the updated version of the post. So that looks pretty good. Now I gotta figure out on this side how that's gonna work out because I'm gonna have to do a couple things when it comes to mock. So I've already mocked the save method. I also wanna mock when we find that particular one. So when we find by an ED, so when I say when uh, repository dot 
fine by ID is called with an argument of, is it, are we passing in one? I could say any here, uh, but I know it's going to be one, so I'm going to say one. Uh, then I want you to return an optional of, so an optional of, and then we'll pass in uh, post, let's say updated, right? So there's our, there's the, I, there's the post that we're returning. So now that we've got that, now I need to create a request body. So I'm going to do the same as above, right? I think that's what we want, but I actually want this uh, with the updated. So I'm going to say um, request body looks like this. Here's the new title and the new body. So we're passing that in as content. So I'm going to say the request body is there. And then we want to make sure the status is okay. So let's see if we can go ahead and run that. And that's looking good. All right. So we're moving right along here. Um, so now I'll probably check the, um, I want to validate this. So I'll probably do something like this as well. Um, valid, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know why I had validated here. Let's do valid. Um, but we'll come back to that. I don't need to go through that. You kind of already saw an example of that. So the last one I need to do is delete. So let's say at test and we'll say uh, void should delete post when given valid ID, right? So what is this going to look like? We're going to use mock MVC to perform now a delete. And that delete is going to go to slash API slash post slash one. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. We want to expect that the status is no content because we're actually going to send back no content from this. So this is looking good so far. Uh, let's go ahead and run this, see it fail. We should get back a, a 405, uh, but we expect a 204, which is no content. Uh, so, so far, so good. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky when you're mocking something that doesn't return anything, right? So um, let's, actually, let's actually implement this first, and we'll return to that in a second. So I'm going to return a response status of no content. This is going to be a, whoops. This is going to be a delete mapping to uh, slash uh, ID. So the ID is going to be dynamic again. And we're gonna say void delete. We're gonna take in a path variable for the ID. And then all we're gonna do in here is use the post repositories delete. Uh, method. So you can say delete, delete by D. You can also um, go find it first, but this is going to be, this will be okay for now. So we're going to say um, by ID. Now this, uh, if we go ahead and run this, um, we are going to call this and let's see what happens. Okay. That is okay because we're basically returning the response status. But we also want to mock out that particular thing that's happening, that delete by D. So when this happens, we're not actually returning something. So we're using another ver another method in Makito called do nothing. So we want to do nothing when the repositories uh, delete by D is called. And again, you could say any ID here, but we know it's going to be one. So I'm going to say that, and then um, is that all we need? Yes. So now that that's done, we also want to make sure that that was called, though. So we're going to say verify that the repository was called, and we want to make sure a specific method was called. The um, number of invocations is going to be one, and then we want to make sure that delete by ID was called with an ID of one. So that's starting to look pretty good. Now let's just go ahead and run this again. And we're missing something. Yep. Now what is this complaining about? Uh, add method contract post repositories dot. Oh, this is a little bit wrong. Let's fix this. When the post repositories delete by ID, 
then this should work. So let's go ahead and run that again. And there we go. So we have kind of finished off everything in the controller. Let's go ahead and run all of our methods here and see if all of these pass. And they do, we're getting all green, that is good. So this is kind of our first step into TDD. We wanted to make sure that we are satisfying the contract of the REST API. Basically, we're just doing all the CRUD methods here. And I get it, I know what's going through your head. That took a lot longer than it would to just go ahead and write out a REST controller. It did. But when we have things like inputs and outputs and we want to verify certain things like, is this a valid post coming in? Those are variables that could change later on when somebody makes changes to our code. So now we have the confidence that if something is being changed later on, this suite of tests that we have is getting run and it's going to complain and say, hey, you've changed something, you either need to update the test or it's going to break things elsewhere. So this gives us the confidence. And like I said, if I wrote this REST controller first, I'm much less likely to write this uh, test. Now, I'm more inclined to write some integration tests uh, going forward, but that's fine. This got me started. Now that this is in place, now I can go write some integration tests, and that is exactly what we'll do in the next tutorial. Uh, so hey, I hope this helped. Uh, a little TDD, again, new for me. We're learning together. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about this approach. If you have some feedback for me on things that I should change, uh, that would be great. Uh, this is a, a great open discussion where we're learning together and, and having fun doing so. But hey, if you learned something new today, do me a big favor, friends. Go ahead and leave me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding.